It's often said that as creators, we are our own worst critics. If you look through any music-related subreddit, you're bound to find dozens of posts of people commiserating about how much their music sucks. And this is a feeling that even the most successful artists know all too well. But sometimes ideas, you know, they're not always the greatest. Yeah. That's the worst song I ever wrote. <laughs> Why does everyone like that song? That song is so boring. A moment like this or Breakaway, really any other song. You didn't want to do that song. No. My heart will go on? <gasps> But at the same time, sort of paradoxically, it's in that ability to not care about criticism or what other people think that allowed these artists to make the things that we respect them so much for. So a couple of weeks ago, I decided to ask a question. I rounded up the answers and the most common themes seemed to be perfectionism, self-doubt, a fear of judgment, a lack of confidence, some kind of technical challenge or discrepancy, marketing and promotion, comparison to other artists, a fear of the future and the point of their work and long-term impact, a lack of external validation, and some kind of sense of personal growth and development from not releasing work, but deciding to work on new things that are better. I think that the point of my videos anymore is just to inspire creative people to do creative things. And in this video, if you're one of those people that's struggling with these things, I wanted to share with you, I think, my key philosophy that I've learned with what happens when it comes to things that hold my own work back. So in this video, I would like to present you with my key philosophy with creativity in life with what I call the three F's of creativity. Fuck this, fuck me, and fuck you. Today's video was made possible by Rune. If you are an absolute music dork like me, then Rune might be a service you want to check out. Rune is kind of like turning your entire digital catalog and streaming services into one massive interactive vinyl sleeve to explore your favorite artists and find new music you may have not found otherwise, alongside a ton more features than I can really explain here. Rune is a really kick-ass service, and honestly, I'm not sure why I didn't start using it sooner. If you want to check it out for yourself and support the channel to make future videos like this possible, you could do so with the link down below. Some of the most common challenges we face as artists are things like self-criticism, a comparison to others, and seeking that external validation when it comes to all of our work and all that kind of stuff. But I think the most important thing you can do for yourself as an artist when it comes to all that stuff is just say, fuck this. By learning to not be afraid to abandon an idea or just call it done with the simple test of trusting your gut, I think you're able to ultimately create a better and more authentic body of work as an artist because you're only doing the things that really speak to you instead of bending something into an idea that you think someone else will like. I think this philosophy also makes your workflow so much more efficient because if you think about it, how much more would you be able to get done if you were willing to simply say, fuck this to an idea that's just not working and instead move on to something that has you a little more excited, even if it's only within that moment. Now, all this stuff is nice to sit here and say, but how do we actually learn to implement this idea in our creative lives? And that's where the other two Fs of this creative philosophy come into play. I'm pretty sure it was Carl Jung that said, the second half of life is learning to let go of ego. And if I'm misremembering that, well, then fuck me. I think the most important aspect of self-awareness as a creative is learning to just identify the real sources of your own self-doubt, and for this, exercises like journaling can be pretty helpful. I think the most dangerous aspect of creative ego is the idea of defined success, and we're almost hardwired to believe in this hard-lined version of what success is and this box that we need to fit in. And it's extremely difficult to break out of this mindset, but it's goddamn important to try. If you think about success, is a toddler finger painting any more of an artist than someone like Picasso? Are you any less of a musician than your favorite artists? When it comes to the idea of success in creative work, I think the only thing we can really have in mind is some kind of goal, whether that's to finish the thing or start something new or complete a bigger project or work towards some achievement. As long as that goal is realistic and within your means, the only thing you can realistically expect of yourself is just to work towards that. As long as you've made progress, that's the only real definition of success that I think we can offer ourselves. Whether or not we accept and realize it, it's not that the world is really against us and our creative work and endeavors. It's just that most people are busy doing their own things and living their own life. I think the sort of paradox within the creative process is that although we have this goal-oriented mindset, we want fans, we want to achieve something or whatever, we have this expectation of the process, but at the same time, the ultimate thing is just to love the process itself. 
All this is to say the most important thing in art is to do and create the things that we find most enjoyable. So that's maybe where the third and most important of the three Fs comes into play. The idea of imperfection, I think, is easy to understand because as humans, we create art and art is human and humans are imperfect. Therefore, true art is imperfect. It's stupid and maybe a bit school textbook sounding, but that's the truth. It's easy to get obsessed with all the details, especially in this world of social media tips and quick hacks and tutorials and free PDFs about stupid bullshit that doesn't matter. And this makes it easy to forget that the ultimate goal of art is self-expression. And the flaws are what often give something character. As we all know, the closer we get to perfection with something, the more it just becomes this clinical, boring, sterile version of itself. And I think Brian Eno once said something to the effect of, as soon as something can be avoided, it'll be emulated. And I think this is best exemplified with all the goddamn lo-fi plugins out there nowadays. The truth we all need to remember and accept now and again is that you're never going to be as good as your heroes because you're the sum of your heroes and your own ideas are what fill in the gaps between your influences to make something new. I think the best way to put this is that you exist somewhere as a shittier version of multiple things, and by being that shittier version, you are ultimately you. And the more you express that, the more you become a dot on someone else's map to be a shittier version of. Jim Rohn once said that you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And while this idea is maybe a little bit flawed, I think it's an important thing to understand as a creator. You are the amalgamation of all the things that you consume and the people that you surround yourself with. So if you find yourself stuck in this sort of proverbial room of crappy people who don't support you or challenge you in any sort of interesting way, you're in the wrong room. As a YouTuber, I certainly know the comment section all too well. And if I've learned anything in my time when it comes to dealing with probably 98% of online criticism, it's that the people with the least to show often have the most to say. I think as an artist, if you want to create something meaningful, it comes down to embracing one sort of simple idea. If you want to express yourself, then you can't be working to impress other people. Great art comes from this internal need to create and not a need to be validated. If you think about it, would we have have the Beastie Boys sabotage if Adam Horowitz was afraid his vocals were too nasal? Would we have getting over it if Bennett Foddy was worried that the narrative and voiceover was too pretentious? Then why are you incapable of just doing something rather than sitting there worrying about what your work might be perceived as? The simple truth is that some people are just going to hate you and your work for no particular reason at all. But fuck those people, because you're not doing it for them anyway. The plain and simple and kind of ugly truth here is whatever you're working on and obsessing over and holding off on releasing and worrying about is all being done on borrowed time. As Seneca once said, it's not that we have a short time to live, but that we waste a lot of it. When it comes to the perfection of your work or the things you're worrying about or the value of your work or the praise and criticism and advice of others or pretty much everything in pretty much any other aspect of life, the only truth I know is that everything matters exactly as much as you let it. So in the meantime, all I'm asking of you is just to fucking go out and make something that you think is important.